Hey everybody, welcome to the 906. If you're new here, thanks for stopping in and checking this video out. My name's Mike. So, uh, no outside work today in the upper Michigan. It's snowing like crazy. Wind's blowing at 30 to 40 miles an hour. So we got a project inside the garage. I'm gonna take you guys along, uh, do a little upgrade on our Wolf Ridge splitter. Once we get going on the project here, I'll kind of explain what the situation is and why we're, why we're doing it. I'm gonna get out of this cold. So here we have it, the Wolf Ridge 28 Pro, awesome machine. And what we're doing today is we're going after this pump. We're gonna swap this pump out with this pump. And we're gonna see how much hydraulic fluid I can get on the floor and on me. Uh, I did watch a video on this. So I'm an expert, right? Um, and the reason we're changing this pump is through YouTube, I caught a video. I'm not even, I don't even remember who, uh, who did the video. But anyway, they were swapping out a pump and there was, I guess some, some problems with uh, availability and stuff a year and a half ago, which is about when we bought this. And uh, the pumps that Wolf Ridge normally would put on here weren't available, so this is the one that went on there. It was supposed to be the same specs. Turns out some of them aren't. Um, so we're gonna get this pump swapped out and see if our uh, cycle time increases. All right, so like I said, I watched the video, which makes me an expert. The one thing I do remember of the video, they couldn't get this hose off of the pump with the pump still bolted on. So of course, I'm gonna try. I do got the shop vac ready to go to pull a suction on the tank. So we won't theoretically lose all the fluid onto the floor into the pan. So I'm gonna try to get this hose off here, even though that video said it couldn't be done. because that would make it a lot easier on the reinstall. You know what, I think I can get that off of there. All right, well, we're gonna go ahead, well, should have the other pump ready so we can stick the hose, stick the pump on the hose. Or no, we got the, we got the, uh, the funnel hose plug 6000 rigged up here to plug this hose so we don't have to listen to the vacuum cleaner run the whole time. All right, so I noticed something already. The video I watched, the guy was working on a 28 Pro C, which is the next step up from this. And this fitting right here was actually a barbed fitting where this one is and it's just got a little knurl on the end of it. So that might have been giving them more hassle than uh, what I'm experiencing here. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna fire up the shop vac, pull a suction on this tank. I'm gonna pop this hose out and then we're gonna try to take our homemade hose plug and uh, insert it into the hose. So here goes nothing. Is it? Yeah. Okay, well that's a fail. Okay, so that was a fail. We actually might have had too good of a seal on the top of the tank. It was pulling oil. He's out, I got a really good uh, shop back. So we're gonna try it again with not as good a seal on it, see what happens here. Go ahead.
Okay. All right, well that went exceptionally well. We hardly spilled anything, which is kind of odd. So now I'm going to go after this, yeah, some people call it a Lovejoy. I think that's a brand name, but I'm going to go after this Lovejoy coupling here. See how tight that set screw is. Probably going to be super tight. Oh yeah. All right, it broke loose. Actually, I don't even need to do that. Should be able to take the bolts out of it and pull this right apart. This is not bolted together, which is the reason why I took the hose off so I could take the pump out that way. Got a half inch wrench. So I'm gonna pull these four bolts off the mounting flange here. Then if my theory is anywhere near correct, we should be able to slide the pump out with the high pressure hose still attached. And that'll make it easier to realign it we go to put the new pump on so I'll get these out and we'll see if this pump will actually slide out of here all right so we got the four mounting bolts out pretty straightforward now I'm gonna see if I can slide this whole pump assembly right out of the coupler and that would be no. So we're going to have to go back to the set screw here. So the, no, I, just, I don't even think I got to take it out. It's a deep spot there. So the coupler's got to be bigger than that hole. coming. Oh yeah, coupler's definitely bigger than the hole. He didn't come out. That's all right, we'll get that out of there. All right, pump's off. Still not a giant mess, which I don't understand at all. I mean, there should be like five gallons of fluid on the floor by now. All right, pumps on, secure. Tighten up the set screw. I don't know, I put a thermostat in a Honda yesterday it was way worse than this job. Good to go. All we gotta do is put that line back on, make a big mess. I'm still waiting for the big mess to happen. It hasn't happened yet. Okay, now I'm gonna put the hose back on. We're gonna bypass the whole shop back deal. I'm just gonna go really quick and not lose a bunch of fluid, theoretically. I've seen worse. So 
So the shop vac was working, but it was actually pulling fluid out of the tank. That's why we kind of abandoned ship on the on the shop vac. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten this clamp up. Then I am going to get to spill a little bit more fluid when I change that high pressure line because gravity is going to be really working against us on that one too. So. That'll do it for that part of it. Good. All right, over at the bench here, just gonna pull this, gotta swap this one fitting, the high pressure hose fitting. Pretty straightforward, other than it's really tight. Yeah, that one wasn't gonna vibrate loose. So we take this, put it in the new pump, hook the hose back up and see what happens. Okay, quick reinstall on this elbow here. I did put a little thread tape on it. It didn't have it on the other one and it wasn't leaking, but I had the tape, might as well use it. It was extremely tight as you saw. So we're gonna go back to extremely tight. Six dollar question, can you go around again or not? I don't think we're gonna try it. All right, put the hose back on it. Are we gonna spill some fluid here? Maybe? Oh yeah. I knew we'd, I knew we'd get to spill some fluid sooner or later. How much fluid? We don't even have the bottom of the pan covered yet. You got that other wrench somewhere? Or is it the same one? Same one. Oh, that's the one. Oh, there we go. This one was extremely tight too, extremely tight. Okay. And last but not least, your OSHA approved, don't put your fingers in there, guard. I think we might fire this up, risk a little bit of carbon monoxide poisoning and uh, give her a few cycles here in the garage and see what it does. All right, so we ran it quick. Um, of course, we're in the enclosed garage here. You know, you start to see double, it's time to shut it down and open up the door. Of course, I don't want to leave the door open too long. It's uh, cold and windy outside. Anyway, uh, preliminary findings. Uh, we're about two seconds faster on the down and back uh, prior than we were prior to switching the pumps. So we're gonna call it a success. We'll definitely uh, 
do a little more uh, timing on it and stuff when we get out and uh, actually split with it. So I've said it before, uh, we went with Wolf Ridge for a few different reasons. Uh, one of them being, we'd like to keep it local. They're Eau Claire, Wisconsin, not in our hometown, but close to it. And, you know, they make a good product. We got to check them out and in person, talk with Chris at Wolf Ridge. And some people will comment on the cycle time of this machine. We didn't buy this machine because it's the fastest out there. It's not advertised the fastest. It obviously isn't. Uh, we bought it mostly for the log lift and the adjustable four-way. Uh, we needed a log lift for some of the guys that are running this machine. They can't lift uh, wood up onto it constantly like some of us younger folks. Wait a minute, I'm not that young, but anyway. And then the other reason now is uh, customer service. Like I said, I saw this on a video that there may have been a problem with the pump. Sent Chris, Chris at Wolf Ridge an uh, email. He had me make a, one adjustment on the return valve, I believe it is. Uh, that didn't help us out any. So he threw a pump in the mail and said, throw it on and see what you think. And I think it's, uh, it's gonna help us out a bunch. So I wanna thank Chris at Wolf Ridge for uh, helping us out and, you know, like I said, it was a couple days, the pump was here and no questions asked. Um, and that's worth something to me. Um, customer service these days can be hit or miss. And the guys at Wolf Ridge are definitely hitting it. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this one up. Thanks everybody for watching. Have a great day.